I was playing. So you get a chance to go down and if you're on a rehab start or whatever it might take, go down and uh, encourage the guys. You know, I've always said I like the teaching aspect and coaching. I think there's a big difference. I like to teach. And then those guys go out and uh, put it into play and do it. So, um, you know, I've got my uh, personal service contract with Houston. And uh, so when I'm around those guys and when Kobe was in that organization, I enjoyed doing it. Get a hit tonight, will you? And uh, so I always been, uh, enjoyed doing it, whatever stop he was at. Uh, we got a little part ownership in the double-A AA and triple-A team over there with Houston. So, again, just love being around the guys when they ask questions. The more I'm around, they seem to relax a little bit around you. Uh, this trip, I came up with Kobe. I was actually with uh, my third son, Casey, who got picked for that athlete game in San Diego. So this is good for him to be around these professionals, see about how they do their pregame work. It's going to help him in the long run if this is something that he chooses to do and that he loves to do. What are your thoughts specifically on, on Kobe back in the Fisher Cats catching now? What, what kind of advice do you give him given your wealth of knowledge as a pitcher? You know, Kobe loves the game, so he you know he'll sell popcorn. I think if Sal get him in the lineup, he don't he don't care. He wants to hit, and uh, we always tease him. If you hit, you don't sit, and and that's the bottom line. But he he's caught me since he was ten years old, and. Uh, he caught uh, two years with Houston's organization. I think went to the All-Star game once, so he's familiar with it. I think once he gets to know the pitchers and how their ball moves and what uh, you know what their go-to pitches are, it'll only help him. I think he can call a pretty good ball game, and you know he can play first, he can play a little outfield, he can DH. So you know in that situation, if he has he has the opportunity to make it the big leagues, you can carry 13 pitchers with somebody like that. I've always uh, enjoyed a guy like Brandon Inge. And, uh, you know, I see, see Kobe doing it. I think Kobe, spring training a few years ago, got to meet Brandon on a quick handshake and a low, so it was pretty cool for him. Um, so he's his own man. He loves it. I think uh, you'll, if you ask any of his teammates, he's always got a little hop in his step and uh, I just loves being around the game. Tomorrow, the 2012 Hall of Fame class gets uh, Your eligibility uh, starts next year. Just your thoughts on your candidacy for the yeah, I mean, I've said it many times. I don't have a say-so in it, so it, it doesn't, I don't sit on, you know, a phone call here or there or worry about it. I'm extremely busy right now with what I got going on. If uh, if it happens, great. If uh, because of, you know, what one guy said about me, uh, you know, and the process I had to go through, if it still uh, sticks with other people that have a vote, then I have no control over that. It's, I'm not going to go around shaking y'all's hands saying I'm a Hall of Famer anyway. It doesn't, it's... It's uh, not why I played the game. Uh, I played the game because I love the game. I had an opportunity to take care of my family, extended family, and that's exactly what I did. So uh, uh, I've been to the Hall of Fame a bunch. Took the kids up to that little, uh, those little, uh, uh, little dreams park thing, and uh, I've met a few of the people that are at the Hall of Fame, and they've been nothing but great to me. So it's been fun. Do you care if you are? Uh, it's it's like your final resting spot. So uh, obviously it's it's important. Um, uh, I look uh, up to the guys that are there. I look up to the guys that aren't there, that uh, played before me, that paved a great way, you know, and, and allowed me to uh, do the things that I love to do on the baseball field, make a lot of money doing it, and uh, try and please a lot of fans while I was out there working hard doing it. So uh, I don't have any control of it, you know. It's, it's similar to when I'm in uh, New York and people ask me about a hat that you're going to wear. You just don't, you know, I've heard that other guys have tried to get um, – money for what hat they were going to wear or something like that and I think the Hall of Fame controls that too now I was you know like I said I, I loved my time in Boston I loved it in New York same thing in Toronto and in Houston I had special uh, teammates and special memories that I'll hold dear to my heart uh, for a long long time so like I said if I had it my way I'd probably wear a Longhorn visor <laughs> that'd be just as easy Speaking of your, your time in Boston, recently went back for that Braves series and yeah. put your, your image up on the yeah. in center field. Yeah. Mixed reaction. Yeah. What were your thoughts on, on uh, that? Well, I, I, like I said, I hear the cheers, and when I'm around town, it's nothing but positive and great. So, I mean, uh, which I expect because, like I said, I worked extremely hard there when I was in Boston to to uh, hang the pennants that we're able to hang and, and uh, almost a world championship. So, um, I followed them a little bit closer. I still do with, uh, with Josh there. You know, Beckett... Uh, Josh, I really enjoy watching him. He goes out there and gives you his heart every time he goes to the mound, whether he feels good or he doesn't. Uh, he comes to the ballpark to try and answer the bell. So, you know, I appreciate that about him. He's, 
he's a bulldog out there. So I enjoy watching him. And since Wake, you know, uh, retired, I used to watch Wake a lot because he was one of my teammates. Does Josh get an unfair rap from fans and some media members this season and, and really starting with uh, September of last year? I don't pay. I don't pay that close attention to it. I watch him, and when he's pitching, I can tee ball him to try and uh, show some of the kids uh, different things, whether they're high school kids at the house or college kids that come by and work out. Um, I text guys that are in the big leagues. I get a lot of texts from um, guys that I've worked with that are on other teams. So just enjoy doing it. I enjoy, like I said, the teaching part of it. But as far as you know, the criticism will go. If you don't pitch well, you're going to get criticized. And if you do great, it's, it's great. So you take the good with the bad. It's um, it's part of the uh, competition when you're out there and battling. You're not going to be great all the time. And if you just stay away from injuries, I, you know, somebody with his talent, he'll, he'll, the, you know, the good will shine through. When you're the ace of a rotation, do you have influence over the rest of the, the pitching staff, especially when it's a younger pitching staff? Uh, positive or negative? Uh, well, I hope it's all positive. And I don't care how old you are in the big leagues, you're there for a reason. So you, every day, if you're, if you're a starting pitcher, when you get up that morning taking a shower, you should, you should think that you're the ace. And uh, you should know that uh, when you go to the ballpark that day and already plan on that you're going to be in a gym once or twice, second, third, with one out. And uh, that's what you get paid to do. You get paid to pitch. So pitch, don't throw. Uh, I see a lot of power throwers these days. The people don't know how to pitch. Uh, uh, real quick question about Little League. Uh, you have 11 and 12 year olds, maybe more than ever, throwing, trying to throw curveballs. The, the win it all pocket yeah. mentality. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on whether they should be throwing that pitch at such a young age and take it from there? <laughs> well, you know, the kids see see uh, the major leaguers or college guys throwing breaking balls, and they always want to figure out how to spin it. I think, you know, when you get 13, 14, throwing a good slur maybe might not be as uh, stressful on your arm until your body really develops. And, uh, you know, it teaches kids a good changeup, and they got two fastballs that they can throw in nine different locations. Got done telling some of these pitchers uh, that you know are 91, 92 down the middle. You throw 91, 92, you throw it in. It's really 93, 94. Same thing. You go away. It's a little less. So again, it's all about pitching. It's not about throwing. I, I was a power pitcher, and I take a lot of pride in that. When uh, as I got older, my velocity went down, and I was able to pitch. And don't walk, guys. And uh, but you just want to see the kids, especially kids that play all year round. Hopefully, uh, get a little downtime if they are pitchers, because you're right. Uh, I went down to see Dr. Andrews' clinic uh, last week. He has a new, uh, a really, really great facility in Pensacola, Florida. Actually, I saw one of the Blue Jays pitchers down there getting arm surgery that Doc was doing, and uh, and he talked about how he has seen uh, quite a few young pitchers and uh, kids uh, that play all the year round. I think it's, you know, I don't want to speak to Doc, but I think he likes the kids playing other sports if they, if they can, just to have a rest. Did you have your kids stay away from throwing curves when they had a younger age? I try to, but you go in the backyard and they're, you know, dropping down and throwing spinners and stuff like that. So you just try and keep them healthy and, and uh, work on those small muscles, all those, you know, little small muscles that they have. So, yeah. I mean, just the last question for you, Roger, uh, about Kobe. Um, he does a great job. I've talked to him a few times. Does a great job about answering questions about much being, better about, <laughs> about well about uh, about being a, a Clemens. Uh, maybe you could speak to the pressure that maybe he faces to to make it to the big leagues, given his last oh. name and given his dad. Well, it's, uh, as he knows, and I think anybody's playing this game, and you guys too, recover. It's very difficult to uh, uh, make that final step to the big leagues and then stay there. And uh, you know, again, I, I, I talk to the guys here at Double A. I feel that when you're in Double A, you have the makeup to be a major leaguer, hitter or pitcher. It's just that you have the mindset and if you can handle failing, because you're going to fail a lot. I'm Kobe's dad, first and foremost. You know, I root for him just like any other dad. Uh, and Kobe's his own man. And uh, we'll talk uh, situations and things when he asks. No different than Casey right now being 17, getting contacted by a bunch of universities. You know, I want him to talk to the coaches, and I want his feelings. And then when he needs a push or shove from dad, I'll give it to him. And uh, so, he, again, Kobe's he's loving it. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad it's a, it's a neat little part of the, the town. It's hot, hot in Tampa, nice here. It was great to see. Uh, it was great for me to be in here when the Red Sox are here because the fans come out, and uh, they've been great crowds here. So it's fun, fun to see that in minor league baseball. See ya.